This is One on One. We are thrilled to be joined by one of the funniest. That's right. Yeah, yes, yeah, she is. Bonnie McFarlane, comedian, author of You're Better Than Me. Hey, what is your better than me? Where did that come from? I don't, you know, I, I used to have it on my Twitter. That was the thing I always had. So, you know, when they click to see who you are, I just went, you're better than me. But I didn't realize, and I'm so sorry uh, to you and everyone else who understands the English language, uh, that it's really poor grammar. Who cares? Thank you. It's fine. I, people on Twitter care. You think, you know, well, yes. don't ignore a lot of people <laughs> on Twitter. I didn't know that my fans, I said they won't notice, but they did. Yeah, well, I appreciate it too. By the way, and you're married to... Rich Voss, that thank you. I, he's a legend. I have to say that it was in our wedding vows. He, he, that, that you said he was a legend. <laughs> Any time I say his name, Who I have, he did or you did. He did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> you must always say legend when mentioning my he's name. He's legendary. Uh, by the way, the story of the two of you meeting. Yes, we were at the out. Comedy Cellar, and I went down to meet him. I'd never met him before. I'd seen him on the show. He's legendary. How did you not know him? I just, I knew who he was. I, I, um, I saw him on Last Comic Standing. I didn't like him on the show at all. I thought he was a jerk, as everyone did. Uh, I was not the only one. And uh, then, uh, but, I, but I was meeting everyone on the show, so I went down and I met him and... Uh, he was not a jerk when you met him. Well, he said, I, he said, you're that comedian girl, which I was flattered that he knew who I was and then, or at least knew that I was a comedian. And then he said, I'd hit on you, but I'm on a date. And then he... <laughs> he was a jerk. That, you know, my I'm, heart went I'm not saying you are a jerk. I mean, but that was it. Was he, but he was being funny. Well, he's, that's his persona. Was he actually yeah. on a date? He actually was on a oh, date. I'm sorry. I'm yes, sorry. And, uh, I, that's a good line though. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone. But he went on stage, right? He got introduced right after that. And he went on stage and he started to bomb. Which, oh, really? so then I left. I wasn't going to be a part Hold of that. Hold on, wait a minute. You left in the middle of him bombing? Yeah, he said he, he, said he turned it around. We'll never know. Because I'd left. Uh, we'll talk later about you leaving in the middle of that. Um, <laughs> but the two of you, I was on, because I do my research, I'm sitting there looking, the serious thing that you guys do. We do a show on Sirius XM. What's it called? My Wife Hates Me. The two of you back and forth. Yes. Are you trying to help people in their relationships or make it worse? <laughs> well, I can't decide. Well, I say we're saving I lives. <laughs> I think we, we help people in that they go, oh, thank God we're not them. I think we're doing better than they are. And you, you know, have a we, podcast. And then we have a podcast, which is name. completely different. It's called uh, My Wife Hates Me. I don't know why we did that. It was like some weird branding thing. We don't, we don't okay, get how, are they different? how entertainment works. Well, it, the podcast, we just sit at home and we just bicker. It's just... Yes. Whatever, ha we're just at our kitchen table. I always forget that um, it's going out. And then uh, the radio show, we take calls and we help people with their relationships. Are you really trying and to help people? Or are you doing shtick? Well, we hang up on a lot of people. Because what, the problems <laughs> well, are too know. hard? They talk too much. And then we have guests. <laughs> we're not the nicest people in the world. But wait a minute, hold on. Money, are you're trying to help people. Yes. But if they talk too long about their problems, Sometimes, you just hang up well, on Well, as soon as we give them advice, and then they go, yeah, but, and then we're like, yeah, forget That's it. That's it. You're not taking the advice. I'm curious about this. This book. Yes. You're better than me. F funny, but a deeper message? Um, I'm not good at deeper messages. If you read one, I'm happy for that. <laughs> I'm not happy that you saw something. But you're from Canada. It. I'm from Canada. So there's no deeper message? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had it. to do that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's all. When did you know? Right on the surface. All right. When mm -hmm. did you know? Uh, that I was going to be a comedian? Yes. Um, well, I. I wanted to be a writer, and I wanted to be, I knew I was funny, or at least comedic, uh, w when I was writing, or at least in my head. As a kid? As a kid, I thought I was pretty funny. No one else did. That still, How do you that, know that still holds true. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. My family no, see, now you're screwing around. No, I you, mean. You knew other people were laughing at you. Other people were laughing at me, yes. <laughs> no, other people were <laughs> laughing correct. at your stuff. Um, well, when I first started doing stand-up, I actually did really well right away, and then I... How old? Um, I was 21 or no, 22. I mean no, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, I know. thank you. You please. were 21. Yeah, you could do the math. And they were responding. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought this was great. This was the best thing that ever happened to me. I was in love with it immediately. I loved hanging out with comedians. I loved that you could say things that other people would think were terrible, and you could get laughs by doing that, and I, I, did, I loved the whole... All of it, going on the road, um, but it was really hard too. And then at some point, you know, you sort of lose that naive thing that you have in the beginning, and you start working on your craft, and you start getting terrible. I don't know why it happens, back up. but you do. 
And then, you, that, you, then you, that became hard. You can't just say that to people. What? Because you can say whatever you want, but you start working on your craft and then you get terrible. Well, I think with comedy, and I see this a lot with other comedians starting out, when you see them and they're brand new and they have something really fresh about them, it's their own persona and they haven't, they don't know how to hide that yet. And it's great, and you think, oh, that guy's going to be amazing. But the, the audience isn't really laughing. You know, they, they're not really getting it. You know, I see what that guy can be. And then you see them, like, three years later, and they've done everything they can do to get laughs, and they're no longer that great Why does that happen? comedian. Um, as I think the audience is not a great judge of stand-up comedy. I do say in the Hold book on, that the audience might be the worst judge of stand-up comedy. You know, you just you hit, hit on something. There's a comedian, if I say his name, it'll... It'll hurt the comedian who's a friend. I'm not oh, say that. it. No, no stop. I'm not because I'm not mean like you. I know. Um, I'm going to find joking. out. You're not mean at all. I'm going to tweet it. No. This comedian said to me, told me he was great. He was performing at Rascals. Mm -hmm. Legendary club where I am it's, over uh, in Jersey. Yes, yeah, stop. Yeah, no, I think it's gone now. Yeah, yeah, it used to be in Jersey, so it's not yeah. so legendary. It was at the time. I believe that uh, Rich and I conceived our daughter in that club. We don't want to know. So, uh, but it's a beautiful thing. So, well, no, that's, I, I don't want, hold on. In the, in the it's public room. broadcasting, it's the second time I've said it today, I don't want to know those details. Okay. But it's, congratulations. Her middle name is Rascal. Okay, so, go ahead. So, here's what happens. He says to me, I was great tonight at Rascal's. I was, I had great material. I was great. So I said, how do you know? He goes, it's just was great material. He goes, the audience hated it, though. Yeah. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, they, I, they were flat. It was a terrible audience, but I was great. And so I said to him, Joe, how is it that you were great, but the audience was terrible? And he goes, I don't know how that works. I said, but if you were great, wouldn't the audience have responded? He goes, it doesn't always work that doesn't way. It doesn't always work but that way. But I'm not way. buying it. Well, I'm not saying that it's the audience's fault, you know, uh, but I will say that if you, go, if you don't know anything about art and you go into uh, a museum and you're looking at paintings, you know, you might not know which is the best painting or which is going to go for the most amount of money. And that doesn't make the painting that you like the best painting, you know? So if you're, you're so that... just because the audience likes a comedian, that doesn't make them the best comedian. Or if they don't like the comedian, that doesn't but, mean he's... But, but we're, in the, we're in the response business. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you here, but here's the question. You are? No. I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> no, so, I love so, it. And last comic standing. <laughs> yes. That experience for you. I didn't enjoy that so much. I didn't like um, being told what I could do. I mean, the whole idea mean? about being a comedian is that you get to do what you want to do on stage. That's your what time up there. Well, they, they wanted me to wear a dress. They, want, they wanted me no, to look didn't. a certain way. Yeah, they really did. No, stop, seriously. For real. I'm not kidding. That's, that's What did you want true. to wear? What did they tell you to wear? Um, I mean, I dress like this, you know. Looks this fine. sexy outfit is what I usually... Well, on public broadcasting, we say wear what you want to wear and <laughs> look comfortable. Is... <laughs> and what was the problem with this? I, they wanted me to be, uh, you know, I guess they wanted me to be the girl, the, the, the cute girl on the show. And so um, I got a lot of a notes to that, to that effect. And I got a lot of notes on how I was responding to certain questions. And yeah, they wanted- From the judges? N no, from the producers. <laughs> yes. Hold on. Are they you said, if you want to go further in this competition, here's what you need to do. You know, I thought it was just about who was the best comedian. Well, I mean, I don't know how it works in public television, but the rest of TV this is, a meritocracy is completely, here. It's, it's manufactured. PBS, it's yes. So, I mean. Bad experience? Or? I mean, when I look back on it, I was not happy doing it, and I wasn't happy after the show was over. I was embarrassed. I, you know, it was a lot of things. If they had, if they had, if, if they had mm. made fun of me, when I was being me, I think I would have been able to handle mm. it a lot better. But I felt like I was being vilified for someone yeah. that I wasn't even, that wasn't even who I am. Well, let me ask you this. Do you buy the whole thing about uh, most really successful comedians? I don't know if this is a cliche or not, because I, I, I think I'm funny. No one else does. Including, I think you're hilarious. No, you don't. Including my wife. Um, who says, I just try to entertain myself, and I don't really care. But that's, the, that's what you should do. Yeah, but she says you take it too far, and that's when I take <laughs> it further. You ever notice? So yes. um, she said, the really, I've often heard comedians say that the really great comedians have to have some tragedy, some deeper, and I'm sitting there saying, wow, is that, what is that? Well, I think you do need some, uh, something grating on your life in order to keep your senses sharp to be funny. Uh, like what, what you know, you see a lot of comedians once they get to a certain level, 
they, they lose their edge comedically. And I think it's because they're surrounded by people who are saying, yeah, that's great, you're amazing. And that doesn't, that doesn't serve you well in you comedy. What's yours? I live with a man who is constantly uh, beating me down verbally. Stop it. In a funny way, I mean, so you're saying <laughs> I, don't Rich... any, I don't want anyone to call somebody out for me. Well, you just, well, hold on. We're not editing it out. So you're saying part of your, as we would say, uh, cross to bear is Rich Voss giving you a tough time. Well, we give each other a tough time. I mean, we're really hard on each other. I mean, but the thing is, it somehow works. I go watch his show. I say, don't do that. That's dumb. And then he'll take it out. And we're yeah. just better that way. I, I need to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Jen Eichlin, our terrific executive producer. Jen, what did you just tell me? Rich Voss will be joining us, uh, and this is not shtick, will be joining us in June on One on One. Oh, wow. So you know I'm going to ask him, why do you do this to Bonnie? <laughs> yes, why please. Why do you do this? <laughs> please so ask him. Why don't you ask him yourself? I do. That's and what our says... whole podcast is about. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, listen to a hundred and some episodes of me asking him that. Well, listen, uh, you are funny. You And by the way, the note said that you were very... Um, Shyer, you said you were shy and you don't look. Well, I, I do have uh, weird social anxiety, but I've yeah, well, I've then, got some tricks to get over it. I drank a lot before I came in. You did the notch, and by the way, you're comfortable here. Yeah, I don't. This know. was right. I'm comfortable in front of a camera or. Uh, I thought you were saying because of me. In front of a microphone. I was like, look, fishing well, for a compliment. Well, but you also, you're very warm and uh, yeah, all that, right? engaging yeah, individual. Get out of here. Thank you. Would you say? I said, what? I said, you're an engaging individual. I think you said aging individual. Oh, no. Bonnie McFarlane, you're better than me. You are better than me. Oh, thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Virtua, Wells Fargo, Caldwell University, the New Jersey Education Association, Suez, Johnson & Johnson, and by Kessler Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.